All right, guys, we're going to go over the, the the recent coding challenge 653 Division 3 today. And I'm going to explain what I did to actually solve this for these two problems. The first one I got AC, uh, I got it wrong the first time, but then I got AC the second time because of division by zero, I think, some, something like that. Now, there's a specific test case that caused me to not get it right. Anyway, here's the problem. Required remainder. So you have x, y, and n, which is three three integers, and you need to find the maximum k, which is between zero and n, such that k mod x is equal to y. Okay, and then the mod is just like the remainder operator, by the way. Okay, uh, in other words, you're given x, y, and n. You need to find the maximum possible integer from zero to n that has the remainder y mod x. Okay. All right, so this problem isn't actually that hard. Um, uh, I'll explain what I did, and then I hope you guys could understand it. All right, guys, so basically, this is the problem. Given x, y, and n, we need to find a k that is between 0 and n, such that k mod x is equal to y. Okay, so how do you do this problem? Well, first of all, we could... Let's try to represent k in terms of x and y, because uh, if we we we're given x, y, and n, and if we could find a way to represent k in terms of x and y, then we could probably solve this problem, right? So, how do, how do I represent k in terms of x and y? So first of all, let's just think about how the mod operator works again. So let's say I take seven mod by three, and what is that? So if I go three. I try to divide seven by three, right? And then I figure out, oh, it's two, three times two, six, seven by six is one. I would get one, right? A remainder of one, because seven mod three is a remainder of one. So then how would I represent seven mod three, three, how, how would I represent three and one in terms of seven, right? It's simple, just look at how you did, did your division earlier, right? 7 divided by 3 is going to give you some number, okay? And that's some number you multiply by 3, add by your remainder, you'll get 7, right? So in this case, 7 divided by 3 gave us a value of 2, and that, that number was 2. 2 times 3 gave you 6, 6 plus 1 is 7, right? So 7 is equal to 3 times 2 plus 1, right? So in terms of modulus, basically I'm dividing some number by another number i get that number if i multiply that them again and add by the remainder i'll get back to my original number so how do i represent k in terms of x and y right because if i represent k in terms of x and y and we're, and we're given x and y we're going to be able to solve for k so first of all k mod by x is equal to y we know that right so k mod by x is equal to y so if i want to represent k in terms of x and y right? I would have to do this. It's going to be the same thing as how we did it here. What we have to do is there's some number when you divide k by x, and let's just call that q, right? q is going to be some number, like q is going to equal to some number, any number, whatever it is, right? Right, and then Q multiplied by X plus Y is going to give us K, right? Q multiplied by X plus Y is going to give us K, right? Because Q is some quotient. It's some number when you divide by X by, oh, at K by X. So that's why, that's how we got this. K is equal to X Q plus Y, okay? So now our, our issue is, is that, okay, we have... We have a uh, x and y, but we still have two variables, right? We don't know what q is. We don't know what k is, right? So then now we have to try to represent k in terms of n and y, right? Because we know that k is between 0 and n, right? k is between 0 and n. So if we could represent k in, ter in terms of n, then we could figure out how to do this, right? So since k is between zero and n, let's think. Let's say I have a number line, one and 
10, right? A number line 1 to 10. Let's say my number is at this point 6. So this is my number, right? I would tell you that this number is between 1 and 10, right? Well, how would I get to this number 6? Simple. I would have to subtract starting from either 1 or 10 from ten, uh, I have to subtract a num uh, some number from my upper bound of 10 by some amount in order to get to my number 6. So in this case, I would have to subtract 4 from the upper upper bound, 10 to get me 6. Or I could add some amount of number from 1, so in this case plus 5, to get me to 6. So it's the same case in here. K is between 0 and N, right? So let's draw a number line of right here. 0 and N. And K is at this, at this point, 0 and N, right? If I want to get to my number K, uh, how would I do it? Well, I have to add K from 0. But I don't know what K is. Do you, do you guys get it? I don't know what K is. Right, so if, K, if I don't know what K is, my only bet is to subtract some number from N to get to K. So in this case, let's just call it W, right? If I subtract some number W from N, I would get to K. So let's write that. So instead of, instead of writing K, I'm gonna subtract N. K is gonna equal to N minus W, where W is some distance from N. Okay, so now you have n minus w. So now let's just plug n minus w into k, into this equation, right? So using substitution. So I'm going to have n minus w is equal to xq plus y. Okay, so now we have this. Now we have this whole issue right here, okay? nq plus, uh, we have n minus w is equal to xq plus y. Okay, so now, now we know what this, this side is. Let's just rearrange it. Okay, we're going to rearrange this. So now I'm going to have, uh, let's add W on the right side, on both sides, and subtract Y from both sides. So we're going to have N minus Y is going to equal to XQ plus W. Okay. So now at this point, you should realize that you could actually get the number that you want. Well, now since we have n and y, we're give, because we're given n and y, we could f have this side, right? And then all you have to do, literally, is just divide by x, right? Using this equation, this equation here and this equation here, we could find, we actually could find what q and w are now, right? Because the definition of modulus is if, and division is that if you mod by something, you, you divide by that number, and then you, could, uh, you get the remainder, right? So now I could, get, I could get, get my W now, right? Because if all I have to do is just take N minus Y, divide, um, have this number N minus Y, mod by X, and that'll give me W, right? The, the, the reason why this gives me W is because like um, X is some number that we're multiplying by Q, right? And if you take N minus Y and you mod by X, that means you're dividing by X, right? You divide by X and you get the remainder. The remainder is going to be W, right? Based on the definition of modulus of what we saw here. So because if you have n minus y, if you now divide, uh, you mod by x, you're going to get w. Because n minus y, and you divide by, uh, you yeah, if you divide n minus y by x, you're going to get some number, right? And then its remainder is going to be w. Because we know n minus y is equal to xq plus w. So that gives us this equation. W is equal to n minus y mod by x, right? So now you have this, 
this number, now we could just plug in all our numbers from here, x, y, and n to get our w. Once we have our w, all we have to do is plug it back in here and then solve for q, right? So if uh, once I have w, I'm gonna plug this back in here and then solve for q. And to solve for q, I would just have to do n minus y minus my w, then divide by x would give me q, right? Um, but yeah. And then once that occurs, we could just do, uh, you could just do, um, yeah, you could solve for Q and then after with it, you solve for Q, you could also solve for K because now we know what K is. K is equal to N minus W, right? So once you have your W, just plug it back into here and you could solve for your K. So yeah, that's basically how I did this problem. So, uh, I'll, I'll show you guys the code now. All right, guys. So this is the code. Uh, just read in T number of test cases, read in wild T minus minus. I read in X, Y, and N. And then the W, remember W is just N minus Y mod by X. So that gives us our W, how far it is from N. Once we have that number, we're going to subtract that number from N. And then, yeah, that'll be your answer. Uh, what I also did was I also checked if it's less than zero. If it's less than zero, then what you should do is add by N. And the reason why you add by N is because uh, that will bring you back to the, the boundaries between zero and N, right? If you, if it's less than zero. So yeah, if I, so what I did was if N minus W is less than zero, I just add by N, add another N to the right side to bring us back to the original boundaries. But I don't even think they test this, honestly. But yeah. Otherwise, I just do print out n minus w, right? n minus w is how far we were from n. So yeah, that's how you do this problem. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.